Before the 2010 Telstra Premiership had even begun, it was clear that this would be a season like no other. For the first time, we had an unofficial curtain raiser called the All-Stars game, and what a special night it was. Wendell Taylor scores in his farewell appearance. The competition proper got underway with a couple of heavyweights slugging it out, the previous season's minor premiers against the side that finished runners-up. Ben Hornby had the honour of recording the Premiership's maiden four-pointer, and his side sent an early message that they were again going to be mighty hard to beat. The opening round also announced just how unpredictable this competition would be. Newcastle produced the initial shock when they toppled Canterbury, and the wooden spooners served it up to their neighbours. Oh, Caddy hasn't given up on it, it's a try! Wow. It'll be a try for Sam Pellet, I think, wow. for the capital T! The events of that afternoon at ANZ Stadium were a sign of things to come. Todd Carney was back in the NRL after more than a year in exile, and he lit the fuse for a wonderful Roosters revival. But he wasn't Rugby League's only comeback kid in 2010. The return of this dynamic dual international not only lifted the West Tigers to a mighty round one comeback against Manly, but ended the season of Seagull star Brett Stewart and his side just wasn't the same without him. A very different brand of brotherly love was in the air when the Dragons and Bulldogs went to war in Wollongong. And then the two brothers say, have a look at this, have a look at this. The New Zealand Warriors were at their entertaining best when they embarrassed Brisbane on their own patch of turf. But that wasn't the only demolition job on the last weekend of March, as Canterbury broke their duck for 2010 and ended the Roosters' promising early run by posting 60 points. He's looking for another one and he makes it. Melbourne's title defence began in style and on Good Friday they cast aside one of their main threats in St George Illawarra. There was no need for Cooper Cronk to look on that occasion, but three weeks later, the focus was very much in the storm for all the wrong reasons. It was possibly the biggest story in over a century of Australian Rugby League. The Storm had been convicted of massive salary cap infringements and were not only stripped of their 2007 and 2009 Premiership titles, but also prevented from earning any competition points in the current campaign. The code had been rocked to its core, but the show went on and Melburnians had something to smile about when their magnificent new rectangular arena, Amy Park, was unveiled in early May when Australia edged out New Zealand in a bruising battle. After their sluggish start to 2010, South Sydney finally hit their straps and it was their fierce rivals who found themselves on the end of a Rabbitohs rampage as Rugby League returned to the Sydney cricket ground. South Sydney have hit the half century. Everyone's attention then turned to the little series we know and love called State of Origin. Queensland had already created history by winning the crown four years running and they wasted no time reasserting their dominance by outplaying the Blues in game one at ANZ Stadium. Boy, The Maroons then had the chance to back their fifth straight series on home soil and it was never in doubt. Here's Lockyer, let's say they go, oh what a play, what a play by Lockyer and in he goes again. That left Mal Meninga's men with one last objective and that was to bring off the first 3-0 series sweep of their current five year reign. Brett Morris in real trouble on the far flank. And what they've gone towards there, Thurston gets it to Tonga and Tonga scores. Queensland are in to score, that's it. They have won it 3-0, the champions take five championships. Even though Origin had understandably hogged the limelight during the middle of winter, there was still some scintillating footy being played at club level. And there was no better example than this. Down end over end to Nathan Gardner and Mitchell Pearce. Right line, so too did his men on the outside. And look at this from the Sharkies. Open space, still going, still going. What a try that is! The Panthers were pretty in pink for the annual Harvey Norman Women League round, but this sizzling effort against Manly would have looked good in any outfit. Tipped on Walsh to Lewis, then to Waterhouse, then to Pertel, then back to Lewis, super rugby league on the Pearson, he kicks in field, yeah. kicks and gets the ball! Oh, 
A familiar face was back in a famous uniform when Mark Gasnia made his return to the greatest game of all after his brief flirtation with French rugby. It took a few gallops for Gaz to regain his former flair, but for Dragons diehards, it was worth the wait. Gaznia! Gaznia scores! 24 hours later, another NRL megastar stepped up and gave us a moment to cherish. Not much pressure on Jared Haney, takes it comfortably. Steps one, steps two, steps three, he's away! Jared Hayne with a catch and a run! They're not going to catch him! All aboard! Tickets please for the Hayne train! The Parramatta Ace put on another masterclass the following weekend, with the doggy seemingly mesmerised by his sheer brilliance. The humble field goal proved to be a useful weapon in 2010. Matt Rogers' match winner against St George Illawarra was invaluable for the Titans, but just a few weeks earlier, it worked against them when Benji Marshall drilled this beauty as the half-time hooter sounded at Campbelltown. Here we go, Marshall! Oh! It's over! It's over! Oh! Has kicked it from halfway! Wow! The Sydney Roosters didn't need one-pointers to make the difference in a string of thrillers they survived during July. Instead, pulling off daring tries at the death. They're going back to the other side. Here's Carney. Orbison. 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 Mitchell Orbison has scored. After five pulsating wins in succession, the Roosters' magic run was halted by a typically patient St George Illawarra outfit in front of 37,000 fans at the Sydney Cricket Ground. On that same weekend, South Sydney conjured up one of the all-time great escapes when they scored in the last second of Golden Point extra time against the stunned West Tigers side. Wessa! Wessa! South looking to win! To Corrigan inside! And that! That is the greatest victory of the season! South Sydney! How did you do it? No club paid a higher price for a victory than Brisbane did against the Cowboys in round 22. The semi-final bound Broncos were far too good for their fellow Queenslanders, but their season took a dive when the great Darren Lockyer was struck by a season-ending rib injury. Without their inspirational skipper, Ivan Henjak's team surrendered their last four matches and missed the playoffs for the first time since 1991. While the Broncos were on their downward spiral, Canberra were travelling in the opposite direction. Playing some sensational football, the Green Machine won eight of their last nine games to snare an unlikely finals berth. This is some sort of try from the Canberra Raiders. The Green Machine is rolling once again. The highs and lows being a goal kicker were contrasted sharply in round 24. Michael Gordon set a new record for most points in a match by a Penrith player when he tallied 30 against the Bunnies. But for Luke Burke, it was pure despair when he flunked this late penalty shot that would have taken Parramatta's duel with the West Tigers into overtime and possibly kept their season afloat. Indeed, there was no more disappointing unit in 2010 than the Eels, who were officially put out of business in the penultimate home and away round when they surrendered to South. Here's Taylor Mark again going over to score! But the Bunnies themselves crashed a week later when they were outplayed by St George Illawarra. Manly shot loss to Canterbury a few hours earlier had opened the door to the Bunnies for the playoffs, but they failed to take advantage as the Dragons celebrated their second straight minor premiership. The opening week of the finals were nothing short of sensational, with the West Tigers and Sydney Roosters turning on an all-time classic. Just five days after he'd been acclaimed as the competition's outstanding player, Dalian medal winner Todd Carney inspired his side to come from 15-2 down. They got to within a point, but their hopes looked dashed when Simon Dwyer brought off the hit that must still be reverberating on Jared Warira Hargreaves. Oh, he has been hit by Simon Dwyer. But then, in an amazing turn of events, the Roosters somehow got the ball back from the scrum, they didn't feed, and a frenzy of passing led to Brayton Astor's stunning strike that forced extra time. A long range shot from Anastas. He's got it! Oh, 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 he got it! Anastas has nailed it! It took almost 100 minutes for the two combatants to be prized apart. Intercepted by Kenny Dow. Gibbs is after him. Fulton's after him. They are not going to get him, although here's Simon Dwyer late. Takiri late, but that's Kenny Dow. 
Not to be outdone by those theatrics, Penrith winger Shandor Earl ensured he'd appear on the season's highlights reel with this unbelievable effort against Canberra on the same evening. Up he goes, up he goes, oh, down he comes, first down, it's a try! What about that? It wasn't enough to save the Panthers from a surprise loss to Canberra, and they followed the Warriors and Seagulls in bowing out of contention a week later. West Tigers fans feared they were heading to Golden Point for the second straight week as Jared Craker lined up this seemingly easy late penalty attempt. From 30 out, 20 in, struck it, oh he's got, no, oh, it's gone wide, it's gone wide. It was down to four and the Titans tilted history was crash tackled by Brian Smith's Roosters. Now to Orbison, now to Kenny Dow, now to Sam Parrott. St George Illawarra's defeat of the Tigers 24 hours later wasn't quite as convincing, only one point, but it still achieved the aim of hoisting the Red and Whites into their first decider since 99. That gave us the first all Sydney Grand Final in six years, and these two fierce rivals didn't disappoint, turning on a mighty battle. Sauer puts a little kick in, there's a try for Gaffnia! In the end, it was St George Illawarra who reigned supreme. The first success for the joint venture and also ending a 31-year premiership drought for the famous Red V and also giving Wayne Bennett his seventh title as a first-grade coach. For me personally, it was all about them and I'm um, really, really so pleased with it. It was a perfect climax to an unforgettable season for the NRL and it's safe to say that 2011 certainly will have a hard act to follow.